Hello everyone! Welcome to the Organizational Theory and Design course. Today, we'll continue with Chapter 2, The Organization and Its Environment. In this chapter, we will talk about assessment of external environment and interorganizational relations and organizational ecosystem. Let's start with assessment of external environment. Traditionally, organizational environment is defined as all elements exist outside the organizational boundaries and an organizational domain is the chosen environmental field of action. In terms of goals and operations of organizations, some sectors in the general environment are more important and some sectors are less important. Task environment includes the sectors which have a direct impact on an organization's ability to achieve its goal. It is possible to state that the characteristic of task environment depends on the features of the business conducted by an organization. Determination of the sectors that have priority should also be considered while dealing with structural arrangements in organizations. Analysis and interpretation of environmental factors can become a challenging business for a particular group of organizations that are seeking ways to survive under complicated conditions. On the other hand, some of the organizations may live in simple and more manageable environments. Environmental complexity is a measure of the number and the degree of dissimilarity of the factors surrounding an organization. It simply refers to the number of interactions of organizations with many sectors or elements within those sectors. Organizations are bound up with numerous contingencies when they face complex environments. Organizations should have appropriate structure to cope with dissimilar elements. It was claimed that organizations must be differentiated in terms of functional departments to interact with the elements in their environment more efficiently. In simple terms, the internal complexity of organizations increases as a result of external complexity. At this point, maybe we should talk about environmental uncertainty. Environmental uncertainty is defined as a function of environmental complexity and speed of change. Researchers have focused on how the appropriate design should be for the organizations trying to survive in stable and unstable environments. Learning and creativity become vital when organizations face turbulent environments. In this case, Old-fashioned ways of organizing business may restrict learning, creativity, and innovation. Turbulent environment requires natural or organic system design. Organizational structure should enable learning and creativity. Applying written rules, guidelines, and instructions to employees is not a good idea in this respect. Employees should feel free and powerful to become innovative and creative. A horizontal and flexible structure best fits when organizations face environmental uncertainty. However, adapting to an organic structure and flexible managerial approach may not be sufficient to cope with uncertainty. Organizations can be divided into three levels, institutional level, managerial level, and technical level. Let's move on to interorganizational relations and organizational ecosystem. The organizational environment defined by contingency researchers seems superficial, technical, and is based on finding the appropriate structural match with certain environmental contingencies. The model of contingency theory provide a basic insight for management practitioners, but they do not capture all the aspects of an organizational context. Modern firms in today's economies have to access required resources, gain support of the society, and collaborate with each other to increase their level of competitiveness. Survival chances of organizations depend on their ability to persuade multiple stakeholders and interest groups about the necessity of their existence. Therefore, it is possible to state that External environment consists of a complex network of multiple types of relations among organizations, interest groups, and critical actors. Now let's see what the different perspectives of environment and organizational relationship are discussing. The first perspective we are looking at is resource dependency perspective. 
organizations have to access required resources from external environment to continue their operations. These resources are raw materials, labor, financial resources, and energy. It was claimed that providing inputs from the other organizations which own these resources is vitally important for organizational survival. Having proper internal operations is not so meaningful if an organization loses its access to the required resources. Most of the organizations depend on others in terms of resource acquisition and survival of organization as a function of their success to manage their dependency relations with others according to resource dependency theory. The main problem for the managers is to find ways to control dependency relations in the external environment. There are various strategies to manage dependency relations with the actors in the external environment. Acquisition of suppliers, developing long-term contracts with the critical suppliers, interlocking, founding joint ventures with the critical firms in terms of resource flow, joining trade associations, and lobbying. The next one is the population ecology perspective. Organizational form refers to formal structure, technology, normative order, goals, and human resources. Population ecology theory tries to explain why there are diverse forms of organizations. Population means a group of organizations having the same structural characteristics which depend on same resources to survive and have similar outcomes. There are two perspectives about how evolution occurs in nature. Lamarck's theory is based on adaptation of species to environmental changes by transfer of genetic codes. Darwin's theory of natural selection is based on fitness of species to the external conditions determined by environment. Natural selection process eliminates the species which do not fit to the environmental conditions. Only the fit species can live in certain environmental condition. Now we are moving on to the institutional perspective. Neo institutional theory focuses on causes of similarity among organizational forms in the environment. A significant effect of social context was highlighted by researchers in terms of organizational survival. Organizations not only use technical methods to compete, but also try to gain recognition of important actors such as state, influential organizations, and society. Neo-institutional theory also states that similarity among organizations in terms of structure, workflows, and managerial practices can be affected from different institutional forces. These forces are classified under three different types of isomorphism. One, mimetic isomorphism. Two, coercive isomorphism. And three, normative isomorphism. Our last topic for today is organizational networks. Social network theory emphasizes another important fact about external environment that may have direct impacts on the organizational performance and survival. Most of the approaches concerning business environment treat organizations as entities isolated from social motives and interactions. However, organizations need social support from the important actors in their environment just as an individual or a group of people. Organizations may decide to have strong relations or numerous professional ties with the other organizations. Their networking preferences depend on several factors such as national culture, societal norms, institutional environment, role of state in economy, and organizational goals. It is important in today's business environment to understand social interaction patterns among actors to predict possible changes. So, this is the end of our program for Chapter 2 of the Organizational Theory and Design course. Goodbye and see you in our next program, Chapter 3.